What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we got something special for you. It's an anime, actually, that is part cyberpunk, cybergenetic, corporations, demons, and ultra-graphic animation that I think you might be interested in. In a title that is a five-episode OVA called... Genocyber. This was actually donated to me by Resolution 67. Shout out. Thank you so much for sending this out to me so I could talk to everybody about this. I'm trying to expand uh, what we do on this channel a little bit to kind of do other stuff because there's a lot of stuff that is kind of horror and I think people would like who are horror that maybe just don't know about a lot of this stuff. And personally, I'm a fan of Chinese, Japanese, Korean all kinds of animation and action films. And uh, yeah, I've been doing some Hong Kong stuff lately, and this is something a little bit different. I wanted to do some anime, and I figured this might be just the perfect spot for you guys. Genocyber is about two girls in the future. This is a dystopian sort of future. It's dystopian in the fact that there are many people who are uniting around the world and some people are not really for that because all of the nations are uniting around corporations and they're becoming like these mega powers to become one unified sanction that are developing all kinds of high tech biomechanical cybergenetic weaponry that is basically to try to take out any problems that occur on the planet. And by unifying, they're trying to end war. So essentially, it's about these two girls. They live in a corporation who has raised them as their lab rats, essentially, but he calls them his daughters, even though he's really not. He's just a really terrible person who wants to operate on girls because one of them has psychic powers and acts like an animal. And she's got this like untapped, insane power that she gets from the psychic dimension, the imaginary dimension, or the shadow realm dimension? I don't know. But this guy has tapped into the psychic realm and able to use a machine that grabs onto that, what they call Vajra, which sounds like a cream, and use psychic powers by combining cyber genetics and the psychic powers. And they're trying to harness this to sort of take over the world. One of the sisters who's like, she's just part machine from the neck down and human from the neck up. He saved her life in some incident that happened. You'll find out. Then the other girl who's the part animal sort of psychic thing, she's kind of like a child brain. She doesn't really talk, but she's this mega power. She teams up and meets this kid who's getting picked on and they become really close. It's a little too fast for my liking, but yeah, they're really close for the sake of the thing. And something happens to him and the sister goes to find her and they get into a big battle. Somehow they unify together and fuse their powers together and become a mega demon beast that is unstoppable. Literally can destroy all cities, almost like the Giver. <laughs> Because, like, they look, the suits that they're wearing and everything, you can even see on the front here. It's, like, part flesh and, like, demonic slash cybergenetic. Like, it's really, really strange. It gets really violent really quick. (laughs) And the story is more than that. Like, it just keeps going, and it doesn't really explain everything to you. Like, this show does not dole anything out to you, and it gets really confusing. And I'm sure that a lot of people had to rewatch some of these episodes like I did just to kind of make sure that they were grabbing onto it. The OVA, by the way, stands for Original Video Animation, which was something that happened in, you know, the golden era of anime, where in the 80s and 90s, they did a lot of different stuff. This was originally a manga guy by the name of Tony Takazaki did between 91 and 92 in a comic book magazine called Comic Nova and was never finished, but people took interest in it because OVAs were pretty popular. Now, this was 94, by the way, so this is one of the last ones that a company decided to do. That company was called Artmic, 
And they did Bubblegum Crisis, and they also did Mega Force 23, and they put out Genocyber as one of their last ones. Now, in this one, you have the English language and the Japanese, if you would like. Uh, it is just the standard definition of five episodes on here. I would say the first episode is probably where a lot of crazy stuff happens. The second episode, too. The third one has a lot of stuff in it, but some people don't like that one. And then the last two are vastly different stories than the first three. Like, it, 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 they try to combine it and mix it all together in this story by the end of it, and it gets really convoluted. Everybody in this show gets torn to shreds. It doesn't matter if you're a human, machine beast, city, human beings just walking down the street. This thing, when it turns into the mega beast, it just destroys everything, including children, which it has some... <laughs> Pretty graphic stuff in there. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's pretty unyielding. The animation in it, though, is pretty awesome. I really actually enjoyed the animation in this one. Story-wise, this one's all over the place. Like, there is definitely some good ideas in here, but it is really hard to watch as, like, a linear thing, you know? Because it's almost like they're dropping, like, little cool bits in this story. Like, the first two episodes are the closest to a story, and then the third episode is, like, this weird sort of side-loaded thing but part of the reason why is because the material that the original guy who did the manga he never finished it so the director of this decided to kind of take his own liberties with it and this is by koichi ohara who if you remember did md geist and many other things but this was one of his other projects that he wanted to do and i guess he went on a trip to like Taiwan or something like that and had all these fresh new ideas that he wanted to add to the show and so the fourth and the fifth episodes are completely different than the first through the third and so there's almost like three condensed stories in this whole five episode thing which makes it even more convoluted than it is it's pretty fun to watch I think it's a little boring in parts some of the characters that you get to meet they're kind of just instantly like in love with each other. And I don't mean in love in a romantic sense. I mean, like they are just instantly bonded and they don't really kind of take the time to show you that bond in this show. So it's kind of like, eh. so you don't really care when anybody gets torn to pieces. But boy, does it look good. You know what I mean? Aesthetically, this is a really, really cool show. And it really does have a lot of potential. There's at least two ideas in here that they could have used to turn into this whole story but you know it seemed like they just really didn't know where they were headed so they were just kind of trying anything in the throw the pasta at the wall and see what sticks kind of move that's what you get here i mean they were running out of cities in the show when i was watching it i was like jesus they just wiped out like 10 the biggest cities in the world where are they gonna go next like <laughs> You know, but if you do like cyberpunk kind of stuff and you like that sort of corporations running the world and you're into maybe stuff like the Giver, not necessarily a good guy. He's kind of like Godzilla, this creature, this person, this girl. When they morph into this one, they kind of become this just force that doesn't really care about anybody. The English dub, by the way, is a little rough as far as like how they translate it, but it wasn't that terrible for me. It just is one of those things where they're leaving out pieces of the story for you to kind of figure out. And it does really kind of take you a little bit of time to really grasp onto what happens because you don't know where these girls come from. You kind of get this story through the dialogue that's kind of loosey-goosey and doesn't really explain it. The little boy that she meets, things happen with him that you just don't really understand. He just appears one time and then it's like, oh, we're going to do all this other crazy blowing up cities thing. And I don't know why, but man, when those fight scenes happen with like some of these like cyber genetic beasts and stuff, it's actually pretty cool. It's just a little obligatory. There's no real base as to why this is necessarily occurring that don't really have a substantive like story. It's not too bad. You know, I would probably say this is like a 6.5 out of 10. I personally like to see the violent stuff, but it does story wise is like, you know, it, we're talking like mid fives out of 10. But 
I still enjoyed watching it. It's just not one I'm going to watch all the time. Keep your expectations low. And if you want to pick this up to see some really awesome looking artwork, it's pretty cool. Are there other OVAs out there or animes that are much more violent and uh, fulfilling? I would say yes. And I would say that some people would probably be on the 6 more than the 6.5 for me. But I really like some of the ideas in it. And I think it has potential. And by God, I would love to see an entire series done where they actually flesh out a serious story with characters that you give a shit about i would actually watch this because it is pretty wild maybe the creature's power is just too much for the sake of anything and it just kind of wastes it all really quick but it's cool man some of the transformation scenes and things that happen in it and the people getting shredded to bits is pretty cool looking but i do appreciate getting this sent out to me they do have a lot of extras on here nothing really major it's mostly just an essay about how this movie came about any extras other than the trailers and things like that but it does have you know all of them in one place and if you're looking to check it out and you want to see it in the best way you can it's standard definition on blu-ray but they put it on the blu-ray so it can be the highest it can get for that standard definition all on one disc instead of multiple but yeah this is from a company called disco tech they do a lot of stuff uh for a lot of classic stuff so but yeah, I hope that kind of gives you an idea of what this is all about. If you're interested in more stuff like this, sound off in the comment section down below. You know, I'm just new to a lot of it. I'm not calling myself like, you know, like I know everything. I just do my research on what these stories are about, where it came from. This is a little bit outside the horror genre, but I think it kind of fits in there some ways. And there are some things that I think I could cover that might interest you guys in the future so let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video please hit the like and subscribe button but thanks for coming by and as always long live the voyage